welcome back um back on the pom-pom um and we are looking at lining today uh you've seen that the it's all painted uh and so i have got the engine cab and tender laid out ready to line now i think when rory was looking he couldn't get couldn't find available the great central lining for the black locos uh, so what we've got he contacted tom at endon valley custom decals and he's created from photos uh all the uh transfers that we need for the engine and tender i haven't got all of it yet um i've got the basic shapes but not enough lining and there's a couple of shapes that needed checking that they fitted before being sure about it. But we've got a really good start. Um, I can see there's a couple of corners short, but I'm in contact with him and he will just send out all the bits I need. I've used Tom before. Um, the Duke of York, I'll show you a picture here. These decals were done by him. As a custom one-off in the style of the Romney Harden Dimchurch. Obviously the RHDR was. And then the, the number for the side was uh, his as well. Like using that style. And here we have, as you saw last time round, my friend Butch. Which is also, uh, he did the decals for a long time ago. That was probably when he was just starting out. Um... And most recently I used him, or another friend used him when I was painting his engine, for this terrier, uh, done up as Fenchurch, which was an interesting job to get into. Um, and more recently I believe he's been doing stuff on full-size stuff and narrow gauge and all sorts. Here's a little few shots of what he's been doing. So if you need him, let me know and I can pass on a contact detail, or... Um, find them on Facebook, Endon Valley Custom Decals. Got to be careful, there are two pages. One of them, uh, when you look, hasn't been used quite as recently. Um, nothing's been posted on it quite as recently. He had a... Uh, he, he was hacked, so he had to close that, or start a new account, and he couldn't even get on to close this one. So, that's enough of that. Let's crack on with what we're doing. So we've got these splashes that want to go on. So I'll cut them out and put them on separately. Um, and the cab sides. Now, I think there's one corner missing because you've got this, which is the line around there. I need to make sure it looks okay and fits because I, it looks like it might want to come this way a bit further. But we'll see. So, he wasn't necessarily sure they're going to be quite right yet. He might need some tweaking, but we he's more than happy to do all that tweaking for us. The bottom corner here, the top corner there, but I'll have to use that corner again down here for the fourth corner. Um, so that's, that's there, and we've got lining to go in between. And over here, obviously, we've got the Great Central with the crest. Uh, these four go up under here and up there with the lining in between. And then there, the, the main body around there. So, let's see how we get on. So I've cut these to shape. I've cut close to the line outside and in. Because of the way they're printed on a on a full sheet of transfer paper, if you don't cut the inside out, then you've got transfer like clear transfer all the way across, which I didn't really want. So, and I've got a pot of warm water. So we will drop that in there, leave it for a little while, and then when it looks like it's starting to peel off. We will apply it to the engine. So, put you in the holder. 
and see how we get on. As you can see, it doesn't always go to plan. Maybe I should have left a little bit more. Shall we? There we go. And there it is. Two splashes done. Just on, move on to the cab next and see what I'm missing to finish the other side and do the tender. So following on from the splasher uh, lining, I've cut out the shape for the cab side, but unfortunately, as you can see here, it doesn't quite match up. We were expecting this and I have spoken to Tom at Endon Valley and he's working on uh, updating the shape which to be honest was expected i might have said that already i can't remember uh, so in the meantime we will look at the uh, valances because i haven't got enough straights to do the stuff on the tender um so yeah i'll, I'll start taking a look at the the valances which i think we're going to do with paint and i've got a couple of options so first of all we've got the boogler pinstriping tool which I've used to good effect a number of times fill it with paint and then the roller um, deposits the paint as you roll it along the engine or I've got some sign writing brushes and some sign writing paint which I am keen to give a go with at some point uh, at the end of the day with either if it goes wrong some white spirit on a rag and it's gone so here is the sort of sample from, from a book which I'm working to. Uh, and yes, I will see what we can achieve. So with the boogler loaded. Oh, 
Ah. That's annoying, isn't it? Start that strip again. So then I just need to get around the steps to whether I try and do that with this or, or with the brush. Um, That was rubbish, but we can keep trying. I'll come back to you when it's done. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. So the long length is done with the lining roller. And the steps and the curves at the ends are done with a brush. This brush here, in fact. So, leave that to dry and then it can be flipped over and the other side done. I've also used the lining pen to do uh, a stripe along the centre of the boiler bands as best I could. So that is how I'm leaving it for today. Um, tomorrow, if I get round to it, spin it over, same on the other side, and then when I finish the red, I'll start thinking about whether I try a white line on there as well. So I have done both sides now, both looking about the same, hopefully. The next job is to get the very fine white line alongside that. So what I've done, I've set up my lining tool, with a much finer wheel, ready to do the same alongside the red. Now, I'm not gonna video this one because I can see that this one's probably gonna take a little while. There might be several attempts at each line uh, and you don't wanna just sit and watch me get it wrong, but I will show you when it's done. Um, and incidentally, I've been asked a lot of questions about what I use to spray the engine. So I'll have a look at that in a minute as well. The good news, I didn't get quite as fed up and pissed off with myself as I did yesterday. Um, I'll take a look at that. I'm not going to show you too closely because I don't think it's 100% perfect, but it is as good as I can do at the moment. I'd need a lot more practice to get better than that. But if you work on the six foot rule, I think that's pretty convincing. Um, okay, I've just noticed one or two little bubbles that, or wobbles that could have been better. I might take a look, look at tidying them up. But on the whole, I am pretty happy. So, on to the spray gun, which I promised I would say something about. This is the one I'm using. Now, uh, probably the first engine I ever painted the first couple and dad used to paint with a uh, badger airbrush um, I don't actually have one here at the moment but I was talking to a sprayer at the company where I used to work and he said why are you painting something that big with an airbrush it's too small you're getting too finer stripes you want one of these um, he called it a spot repair gun um, in the motor trade they would quite often get something this size with a, a decent sized gun that they were buying they'd get this free almost 
but it's got a knob there for um, the, the amount of spread on the fan. You can turn the turn that one way or the other to get the fan to go sideways or vertically. Uh, that will adjust how far out the needle comes to adjust how much paint comes out when you pull the trigger. It basically stops you from pulling the trigger too far. And there's a screw, thread, screw at the bottom to limit the air as well. You might notice there's something in it at the moment. Um, again, a tip from him was if you're using it semi-regularly, just leave a bit of thinners in the pot. It'll just keep everything fresh inside after you've cleaned it. Uh, and when I finish, or when I go to use it, I will spray that through the gun, put a little bit more in, spray that through, give it a wash out, and then I'll, but just before I put the paint in, I will put a, a little bit of the, the thinners that goes with the paint I'm using. That will go in just to sort of freshen it up and, and make sure it's the correct thinners that's in the gun, if that makes sense. Uh, and then I spray. And then when I finish spraying, pour out what's left um, and loads of thinners in the top of the pot, spray it through, shake it up, spray it through the gun, tip it out, some fresh thinners, spray that through. And he, he, said, he recommended putting a whole pot of the, of the gun as thinners through the gun to clean it all out. And then every now and again, if he's using it a lot, or when I finish using it completely, strip it right down and give everything a good clean. So that's the gun I'm using, and that runs quite happily off of um, a standard, standard, a little one and a half horse, um, 25 litre air compressor. So that's the setup I'm using for the spray. So, Let's get back to some lining. And so just to finish that off, I have on the splashes, uh, brush painted some varnish um, because I didn't really want to get the, uh, the gun out and spray it all just for the sake of those two splashes each side um i did put a little bit on the valances because there was a couple of spots where i hadn't quite got the top coat on properly and like under the steps but putting the, the varnish on has given that a gloss finish so it all looks good um but my reason for that is that's all the lining done to the chassis uh, the boiler itself doesn't need any lining. The, the cladding doesn't need any lining. Um, so the next, the bits that are left are the cab and the tender. So I should be able to get the engine start to be assembled now that we've checked the boiler. I have also, using the lining pen, uh, done the boiler bands. Um, so, yeah, hopefully... They'll be good. So that was the lining pen done three times. Uh, one for the red, one for each of the whites. Left it to dry in between each each one. Um, it's come out not too bad. There's a couple of bits I might want to touch up with the brush, but overall it looks pretty good. So next time round we'll be starting to put it back together. Um, so thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.